I trust you've had a good morning. Young people, great job, enjoyed uh, the skit. Uh, so you get another hand clap from your pastor. Good job. Just the pastor. Huh? <laughs> Guest visitors, you're a blessing to us. Thank you for coming. Um, it is a, a special day. Uh, we sang Worthy is the Lamb. Uh, which will be a message that will be shouted through uh, heaven's glory one day. And uh, Sunday week, uh, we'll be returning to uh, our study in the book of Revelation uh, with the title, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And indeed, we will have the privilege one day of casting our crowns before his feet. Amen. The message this morning is entitled, He is Risen. Scripture reading. This is the message the two Marys heard at the empty tomb. He is not here. He is risen. Come see where he lay. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we praise you this day that you would love us to the degree that Jesus would come and be born into this sinful world uh, to die uh, for our sins. Uh, thank you for the message of the cross that you share with us in your word. Thank you for the message of the reality of his resurrection. Thank you for the words, he is risen. And we'll give you praise this day because he has. In Jesus' name, amen. When President George Bush attended the funeral of the former Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev in November of 1982, he was deeply moved by Brezhnev's uh, widow and what she did. She stood at her husband's coffin through the whole procession she stood motionless by his side until, until the soldiers came to close the lid. It was then she did something startling over his lifeless corpse. She made the sign of the cross. And you try to grasp the gravity of what she did with the whole communist world watching this, she stood alone courageously and made that sign over his body. She stood defiantly testifying of another message and another death. It was a message that struck at the very heart of atheism and what her husband had spent his life building. Hopeful that her husband was wrong and trusting in a life beyond the grave. Do you believe that? It was a message of life in a time of loss. And it's just such a message that was heard at another graveside in Matthew's gospel. Turn with me there. I'm in Matthew 28. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's look at verse number 5. And another angel 
answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. There was a time in my life that I wasn't seeking Jesus. I wasn't looking for him at all. But he came looking for me. And he found me right where I was at. And all of my unbelief. But he forgave me for all the wrongs that I had ever done and ever will. He changed me. When I wasn't seeking him, he sought me. The angel goes on to say, he is not here. He is risen. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. These were the angel's words to the women at the tomb. And these are the words to you and I this morning. He is risen. These were the words of the early disciples. And these are the words of his disciples today. These were the words rehearsed again and again in the first church. And these are the words of the Lord's churches around the world. My son and I spoke with a pastor in India Brother Praveen, and he's uh, preaching that message today. Amen. And these are the words that ring out in the lighthouse today. He is risen. Can't quite hear you. He is risen. He is risen. <laughs> That's a message that will transform your life when you place your trust in the Christ of Calvary. Could a message like this be real? Could one actually come forth from the grave? Could life really come from death? The Savior promised it. The Gospels pronounce it. The disciples preached it. And the gift of God proclaims this. He is risen. Is it real? If Jesus truly rose from the dead then you and I are obligated to believe this book and all that it declares. But if you don't believe it, Why worry about any of what he said? Samuel Clements was a non-believer. And he said, it's not what the Bible says about heaven that bothers me. It's what the Bible says about me that bothers me. But if Jesus didn't raise from the grave, 
don't bother about this book at all in your life because it doesn't matter. That means there's nothing after the grave. Absolutely nothing. But I choose to believe that there is something beyond the grave. I choose to believe what Jesus said. The issue on which everything hangs is not whether we like everything he says, but whether or not he arose from the dead like he said he would. I love it. Let's turn to yet another graveside filled with tears and see in John 11 what Jesus has to say. And let's pick up our reading here in John 11 and verse number 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Though a man die, yet shall he live again. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This was at a graveside. This was the words to Martha. Do you believe this? And she said, yea, Lord, I believe. And whosoever believeth in this shall never die. <laughs> because death is not a finality. Death is a beginning. A new beginning. A forever beginning. All because of the words, He is risen. When our Lord said, I am the resurrection, was this the truth? <laughs> then we should say, like we mean it, he is risen. <laughs> ah. The empty tomb reveals his resurrection, but it also demonstrates ours. The whole alphabet of human history points to Jesus Christ. Whether we like it or not, even the calendar that we look at and abide by comes with the words either B.C. or A.D., before Christ or after his death. Is there something after his death? God bless your heart, there he is, because he is risen. Amen. His coming, his death, his resurrection, everything points to Christ. Nature itself points to Christ. The heavens point to Christ. This world needs to be pointed to Christ because the Lord who vacated his tomb has not vacated his throne. Tomorrow's history has already been written in his blood. Tomorrow's promise has already been proclaimed in an empty tomb. Tomorrow's victory over the grave has already been guaranteed. His triumph over death points to our triumph over death. He is risen. But thanks be unto God which giveth us his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> our old history died on the cross and our new history begins with his resurrection. 
Do you know our risen Savior calls us the children of the resurrection? Turn with me to Luke's gospel just for a moment. Luke's gospel. What a title for us to wear. Those of us that have trusted Christ. Those of us that have asked Jesus Christ to come into our hearts. Those of us that have been changed by Jesus Christ. We're the children of his resurrection. What a title. Just listen to this. Verse number 36 says this. Neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. It is this last phrase in this verse that I pray captures your heart because it has captured mine. Children of the resurrection. That's what I am. Sweet people, this is our resurrection reality. He is risen. It is these three words that transcends death and transforms our lives. Then it is these words, He is risen, that should resound in our praise and echo in our hearts every day of our lives. The very first verse of scripture that I learned at camp was, this is a day the Lord hath made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. And I've never forgot that passage of scripture. This is the day the Lord hath made. Every day is a wonderful day that God has made. But you know what the psalmist is declaring there prophetically, messianically, he's saying, this is the day, the day that Jesus arose from the grave is a reality. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that we rejoice and are glad in it because he arose. <laughs> Every day of my life I can find his gladness and I can rejoice in his greatness. Every new day is a day that I can be glad that my Savior arose. Every breath I breathe, God bless your heart, is because He arose. <laughs> He's risen. I don't worship a dead Savior. I worship a live king because he conquered death. He conquered sin. He conquered hell for you and me. Wow. But thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph. I love it. He is risen. In a world full of losers, I'm a winner in Christ Jesus. I'm more than a winner, Paul says in the book of Romans. All because he arose. The resurrection gives my life hope and the opportunity to start over no, no matter what my circumstances may be. Wow. I don't know everything that's going on in your life and you don't know everything that's going on in mine. That's probably a good thing. But I can tell you this. And when I need to start afresh, I can. I can because Jesus 
rose. He's risen. Glory to God, he's arisen. Paul tells us that we have been given a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. You find that in 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 and 4. You know, hope is not this. I used to be able to do this, but I can't anymore because of my stiff fingers. But I'm telling you, hope is more than this. I'm telling you, we have a hope that is alive in Jesus Christ. It's a hope that's made reality through faith and simple trust in what Jesus said he would do. He's arisen. I want us to set the stage back in Luke where we find the words children of the resurrection for just a moment. You see, the Sadducees came to Christ not because they wanted to hear what he had to say, but they came to challenge him and to find fault in him and a reason to deny him. So they came with a question that they thought was impossible for Jesus to answer. I always had trouble when I tried to study about the religion of Phariseeism and Sadduceeism and the Herodians. And I, I could never seem to remember until I just realized that the Sadducees, you know, the Sadducees didn't even believe in the resurrection. And yet they're asking Jesus about the resurrection. Didn't even believe in the resurrection. And the way I remembered that is the Sadducees, you see, are sad you see. <laughs> because they don't believe that Jesus arose from the grave. So they came challenging Jesus. Which is interesting on many different levels. So, what level are you on with God this morning? Because it was here that the master teacher, knowing their darkened hearts, replied by calling us, mind you, the children of the resurrection. He's telling these people that don't believe in the resurrection that there are children, that he has children out there of the resurrection. And you know, they could not find fault. And they never came to Jesus again publicly. Ever again because of what he said. How those words must have stuck in their throats and pierced their hearts so much that they would from that point never ask him another thing. And it is this title of our Lord that should resonate in our hearts today. We are children of the resurrection. <laughs> he is arisen. How blessed we are that the Master would call us the children of resurrection. So each of us this morning are the children of his resurrection if we've trusted in Christ, if we know that he died for us, if we've asked him to come into our heart. All because he arose. <laughs> it's interesting that Jesus would use the word he did in the Greek for children when he said children of the resurrection. It's a special word. It is the Greek word weos. 
And there are a great many other words that our Lord could have used from infancy to adolescence here to express children. But he chose this term to use. And weos speaks of a child that is growing up and becoming mature in the process. A child who has become a son ready to inherit. So what does that make us? I can tell you what it makes me. I'm a son of the resurrection, and so are you. I'm addressing sisters of the resurrection to you sweet ladies. We are brothers of the resurrection. We are daughters of the resurrection. God bless your heart. We are brethren of the resurrection here in the lighthouse because he is risen. And because he has, so are we. These three words, brethren, are life changing. They're life altering. They're life surpassing. They are life transforming. They are life transcending. Because he arose, so will we. Because he is arisen, so will we. Because of his resurrection, so will we. But, if you don't believe this, chuck it. Just close it up, forget about it, don't think about it anymore in your life. Because all you've got right now is your breath. And when you stop breathing, that's it. But even there's something more than that. But you won't like that. Because Jesus calls that place hell. But he doesn't want you there. That's why he died. But he didn't stay dead. He's risen. Glorious words. He is risen. And because of these three words, my life will never be the same. Because of these three words, my forever has been changed. Because of these three words, <laughs> my eternity is assured. This message of the risen Christ is what this entire world needs to hear. And if you've never heard it, you need to hear it this day. My Christ is real. His life is real. His love is real. And his heaven is real. He wants to share all of that with you and I. With no religious strings attached whatsoever. This life is not all there is. Showing my age here, but uh, Pei Lee used to be a singer. <laughs> uh, she's breathed her last, by the way, and I hope she's in heaven, but this is the gist of the song she sang, and it was entitled, Is This All There Is? And in the lyrics of the song, it talks about a fireman that loses his life in a fire and talks about a policeman that loses his life on the streets. And it talks about a child at a graveside crying. And all through the song she sings, is that all there is? Is that all there is? Is that all there is? Well, is that all there is?
but that's all there is. I think I would have checked out on life long ago. Ex-cop. You know what a lot of ex-cops do? They eat their gun because they can't handle all the death they've seen. And they just opt out. And I'm telling you, you can't afford to opt out on life because that is not all there is. God bless your heart. There's something beyond that. And I heard this message about this Jesus and about his love. And I had the hardest time fathoming that someone would love me like that. I didn't receive Christ the first time I heard that message. I didn't receive Christ the sixth time I heard that message. It was just shared with me time and time and time and time and time again by people that had this love that I wanted, that had this joy that I didn't. Until I finally saw this life in them. And I said yes to God. This is what I've been looking for all of my life. And I found it in you. There's something beyond death. And it's life forever. if you'll ask for it. Death is not the end, it's just the beginning. Graveyards don't frighten me. I actually like to stroll through them. Because you know what every headstone says to me? There's something beyond that stone. It's Jesus. He arose. God bless your heart, he arose. He's risen. Those headstones speak to me of better days yet to come. My mortality speaks of my immortality because my Jesus defeated death when that stone was rolled away. The gospel then is the gospel of a risen Christ. The resurrection is the demonstration from God that life is timeless, that life is eternal, that life is forever. The resurrection speaks of a day when everything that hurts will be gone. God bless your heart, there's a day that is coming when every tear shall be wiped away. There's a day coming when there will be no more evil and no more bad and no more wickedness. Just Jesus, His life, His glory, his heaven, his promises. He's arisen. <laughs> These three words then is a message of life for the living. And you're alive right now, so it's a message for you. It is a message of deliverance for the dying. It is a message of heaven for the hurting. It's a message of grace for the grieving. 
It's a message of salvation for the unsaved. It's a message of rescue for those needing rest. It's a message of love for the unloved. It's a message of hope for the hopeless. It's a message of help for the helpless. He is a message of a new beginning for those needing a fresh start. Is that what you need? Is a fresh start? God bless your heart. You can have one with Jesus. It's a message of destiny for the decided and a message of jubilation for those on a journey with Jesus. Are you on that journey with Jesus? This is the day that the Lord has made. He will rejoice and be glad in it. And we are the children of the resurrection. And hallelujah is our song. Even when most of the time I sing those words, I'm flat. <laughs> but the message isn't. Hallelujah. He is risen. Amen.